Hello, I'm Curtis Ansel, engineer with the Public Works and Natural Resources Department and project manager for the Left Hand Creek Drainage Improvement Project. With me today is Dave Hollingsworth, storm drainage engineer also with Public Works and Natural Resources, and Joe Jorgensen, engineer and project manager for, the design, for our design consultant, Muller Engineering. We'd like to present to you today some of the history and development of this project. The goal of the project is to reduce the existing 100-year floodplain, primarily within the Southmore Park neighborhood, through improvements to the flood carrying capacity of the Left Hand Creek Channel. These improvements will remove 172 homes from the current 100-year floodplain, as well as eliminating flooding of Main Street. In November 2007, Voters approved the ballot issue 2B, authorizing the issuance of bonds to finance system-wide storm drainage improvements. The Left Hand Creek South Pratt Parkway bridge replacement was one of the four projects listed for improvement on this ballot. Included in this bridge replacement design was a hydraulic analysis of the Left Hand Creek channel upstream and downstream of this bridge. This analysis showed that the new bridge alone would not reduce the existing floodplain as was originally hoped and the additional improvements would be necessary to, be, to achieve the reduction of this floodplain. Now with further information on the development of this project, I'd like to introduce David Hollingsworth. Thank you, Curtis. I would like to give a short history of the previous flooding and the basic floodplain information. Here are some photographs of prior flood events. Left Hand Creek suffered a 100-year flood in 1969. The stormwater came out of the channel and washed away the bridges at Pike Road and South Pratt Parkway. We experienced two 20-year floods in 1995, which occurred two weeks apart. This is a photo of Pike Road after we breached the road as the, as the flood was getting ready to overtop Ridgeview Drive. We constructed some improvements to Pike Road following the 1995 floods. We built a box culvert with a bikeway underpass to carry the 20-year flood. We lowered Pike Road to pass additional flow over the road for larger storm events. The City of Longmont is part of the National Flood Insurance Program. FEMA regulates the floodplain by issuing flood, a flood insurance study, including flood insurance rate maps. Flood insurance is required when the building is in the 100-year floodplain. The 100-year floodplain has the probability of occurring one time per 100 years, or a 1% chance of flooding each year. Minor storms can also create flooding problems. The existing channel capacity of Left Hand Creek in this area is the 20-year flood. Floodplains can be changed or, or be updated. Reasons for the changes include improved surveys, mapping techniques, or new computer modeling programs. New bridges and channel improvements can also change the floodplain. FEMA issues letter of map revisions after improvements are constructed, input into computer models, and submitted by the city for their review and approval. Flood insurance is required for any building with a federally backed mortgage that touches the floodplain. Mortgage companies are the entity by law that must ensure that buildings they finance have flood insurance. The average cost of flood insurance in Longmont is about $1,500 per year. Floods are a major safety and health concern. Floods can also cause property damage and restrict emergency access. It can take many months to replace bridges or other public infrastructure damaged or destroyed by floods. We had a different approach uh, to designing drainage channels in the old days. We would construct straight, narrow channels with limited habitat. Many channels in the city were constructed of concrete to minimize the width. This is the concrete channel that is located at Twin Peaks Mall. 
I'd like to introduce our design consultant for this project, Joe Jorgensen of Muller Engineering, to talk about the specific project design. My name is Joe Jurgensen, and I am the project manager for Moeller Engineering Company and we were hired by the city to help with the design of the Left Hand Creek project. So I thought I'd start by showing a vicinity map and the project reach spans from Main Street at the downstream end to Pike Road at the upstream end and Left Hand Creek, if you look at my cursor, flows in this direction towards Main Street. This is a picture of the regulatory floodplain. This is the floodplain that's in effect right now. Um, and the area in blue is the, is the area within the floodplain. And the red houses are the houses that would be flooded in the 100-year event. You can see that it's widespread and there's no, oh, it's advancing. You can see that it's widespread and it's not contained in the channel anymore due to the undersized nature of the channel. And there's a number of road crossings that are acting as bottlenecks along the way. You have one at Main Street at the downstream end. You have another one at South Pratt Parkway where my cursor is showing. And then if you come up further upstream, here's South Bowen Street. There's another bottleneck there. And then when you come up all the way to Pike Road, the, you can see there's a major spill um, into the southern overbank along this route too that, that causes flooding as well. So as part, of, as part of every floodplain study we do, we're required by the regulators to update the floodplain based on the best information we have. So that was our first step. And this, this slide here shows the results of this updated information, the updated mapping and updated hydraulic modeling. So you can see it's largely showing the same picture. However, there's a couple highlighted, a couple areas I'd like to highlight. One is here at Main Street. You can see Main Street is overtopping in the 100 year event. And then you come up to Bowen Street and there's a little bit more flooding at Bowen Street. And then you come up to Pike Road and you see there's a lot more flooding up around Pike Road as well. So our, our, our mission was to come up with a plan that was going to reduce the amount of flooding that was going to happen by, by reducing the floodplain and preventing flooding of as many of these red houses as possible within the limits of the available funding for the project. So we came up with a plan and that, that plan would allow us to transfer the floodplain from this existing floodplain to this proposed floodplain. So you could see we've come up with a plan that would really reduce the flooding in the vicinity of Main Street and then also prevent the flow from spilling up at Pike Road. So what I'd like to do now is go through the progression of improvements that were required for us to create a floodplain such as this. So on this slide, you can see there's a gray area right here. And this is at South Pratt, where South Pratt Parkway goes over Left Hand Creek. And this, as Curtis mentioned earlier, was the original scope for the bond that was passed. And so this was our starting point. And we got in there and we looked at upsizing this crossing. And it turns out that it had very little effect on the floodplain. So the next thing we did was we went up to Main Street, or down to Main Street, and looked at upsizing that crossing in addition to the South Pratt Parkway crossing. And the same thing existed. This reduced a little bit of the flooding that was going over Main Street, but did not reduce much of the house flooding that was occurring. So then we went one more step, and we looked at upsizing the channel in between Main Street and South Pratt Parkway. And we got good results from this effort. We really reduced the backup that was occurring in the vicinity, in the immediate vicinity of that channel. And um, we eliminated the backups that were caused by South Pratt Parkway and Main Street. However, there are still major spills happening up way upstream at Pike Road. And so our next effort 
was to look at what can we do to eliminate that spilling from going through the neighborhoods at the upstream end. So what we came up with was hatched in gray here was raising the Ridgeview Drive roadway embankment and then also raising the Pike Road embankment. And then in combination with this, we also looked at increasing the capacity of the roadside swale so that all the water that's spilling over Pike Road would be drained back to the would be drained back to the left hand creek channel. And both of these working together would eliminate the spill at Pike Road, thus keeping all the flow in the left hand creek channel. This next slide shows some examples of how we're upsizing the cross section um, of the channel. So you can see we're making the channel wider and deeper. And if you look at these slides and you can see the red dashed lines right here where I'm pointing, uh, that's where the existing channel is right now. And so we would come in and we would lower and widen things. And along with that, lower the trail bench to free up more capacity to carry flood flows. In this top section, you can see there's also a wall where I'm pointing here. And that wall um, would, would exist for about a 500 foot stretch in between South Pratt Parkway and Main Street along the south bank where all the commercial properties are. Similarly, here's some sections that show the increased capacity of the crossings that we're dealing with. The top one is South Pratt Parkway where we're more than doubling the open area of that crossing to allow more flood through there. And you can see it also would contain a pedestrian underpass for the trail system. And then on the bottom, there's a picture of a pedestrian bridge. And this is the one in the park just upstream of South Pratt Parkway. All right. So next, I wanted to show a series of example photos from projects that we've done in the past that have similar characteristics to what we would do along Left Hand Creek. The first, this first slide shows a series of restored channels, and these were channels that we had to come in and do a lot of disturbance to, um, to get them to, to, to serve the, the function that we wanted to, and we were able to restore them in a natural fashion, as you can see by these photos. This next slide shows a series of drop structures. We're going to have two drop structures on this project. One would be just upstream of the South Pratt Parkway culvert. The other would be just downstream of Pike Road. And these drop structures purpose is to stabilize the new channel at the lowered grade that we're creating as part of this project. Here's a uh, a, few pic a couple pictures of a trail underpass, and this underpass on the lower left is what exists at Pike Road, and we would have a similar underpass to that at South Pratt Parkway, and then also at Main Street. Here's a few photos of the trail system that would go through the project. On the upper left-hand side, you can see there's a wall right next to the trail, and this is a similar condition that we would have for that 500-foot stretch between Main Street and South Pratt Parkway. On the, in the middle of the slide, there's a boulder wall, and we would have a series of boulder walls to, to act as retaining walls up against the trail, and then also on the right, we would have some natural banks that would, that would lead down to the, the channel from the trail. Last slide showing photos are um, a series of pedestrian bridges. The lower left hand is the one that exists just downstream of Main Street. We would look to put in a new pedestrian bridge to replace the existing bridge in the park upstream of um, South Pratt Parkway as part of this project. All right, so everything that I've talked about so far is preliminary in nature. There's, there's been no approvals issued to this point. And our next step is to go through the process with FEMA, who's the regulatory agency, and have them come in agreements, agreement with us 
to state that the floodplain that we're coming up with is what they agree with. So we're in step one, which is a conditional letter of map revision. And, and this is a letter that FEMA would issue that says that they agree with the floodplain that we're proposing. And this is done, this is currently being done as part of our design process. And then once that letter is issued, we're okay to go to construction of the project. And then construction of the project would occur and afterwards we would gather all the as-built information from the project and then submit that to FEMA. And if once they agree with that, and that's step two, which is the letter of map revision, they would an issue a letter of map revision to state that they that the the floodplain is officially changed so the official changing of the floodplain would not occur until step two with a letter of map revision concurrent with the floodplain process we are also going through an environmental permitting process and the agencies that we're going through on this are the u.s army corps of engineers and then we're also going through the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the EPA. The things we're looking at as part of this process is what, what are the impacts from this project on the waters of the U.S., wetlands, threatened and endangered species, and trees and shrubs. And then what is our project doing to restore these items as well. As far as trees and shrubs go, there's, there's definitely a need to, re, to remove the majority of the trees within the project improvements for two reasons. One, to be able to construct the increased capacity system, and two, to reduce the obstruction that they cause to flood flows. However, as part of this project, we'll be replacing the majority of the trees with new trees, but they will not be at the bottom of the channel. They'll be along the tops of the banks. And I have a couple slides. This first slide shows the downstream area where you can see where my cursor is here is Main Street. And then at the upstream and the slide is South Pratt Parkway. And all along this channel, you can see we're coming in with new trees that would, that would line the channel and provide um, a restored look to the channel with, with, with a series of trees. And then at the, similarly, at the upstream end of the project, this is Pike Road here that we're looking at, and we would be where, we, where, we, where we're restoring this channel, we're also coming in with a series of trees to line this section of channel as well. All right, thank you for your time. This concludes our presentation. We'll be available on Tuesday at the council meeting to answer any further questions. Thank you.